Hey everybody, uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today's video, I'm going to start like a part progress video on how to assemble a, a 4AGE 16 valve motor, specifically a small port, but technically you can do this on any 4AG motor too. Um, so this will be like my second motor I'm going to reassemble. The first one I did a couple years ago and um, it was definitely good because I had the motor for a year and a half just racing it and tracking it once a month or even twice a month and no issues till uh, April but um, anyways I think you know it was my, if it was my assembly process it probably would have blown up a lot sooner than later so I decided to do a video on how to reassemble a 4AG um, just because I felt like I was pretty confident in my first one here so I'm gonna show you all how I do my second motor here so I'm gonna you know put this on this little I guess body cam here uh, see how that kinda goes with the point of view so here goes nothing so um, yeah um, I'll put this guy on here first for a second here and it's gonna be totally unedited too just because it's just too much time honestly so basically this is the head part uh, I'm not gonna mess with that right now this is gonna be all the bottom end stuff and you wanna before you assemble anything you want to make sure that you arrange it um, in a place where it's easily accessible all organized and easy to get to so you don't you know lose any parts or anything like that or forget to do something so I basically organize it to where what I'm going to do first and then kind of work my way all the way to the head part. Um, so today I'm going to install or reassemble my 4AG here. And when you're assembling things, generally you want to make sure that everything here is clean. Like you can decently clean at least. You don't want to be doing this in a place that's like dusty or you know a lot of dirt can come by so yeah um, I'm gonna turn my light here too here just so I can have some light here later on just there we go and then I also have uh, the P uh, PDF of the 4AG reassembly here which I'll be using this to kind of um, look through as reference so first thing I'm gonna do is just put some gloves on and get that going here hopefully also on the video the camera doesn't get all uh, I guess die or anything like that there so anyways yeah so I'm gonna put my gloves on here first and I got some tools already here first you want to do when you're reassembling a motor is you want to make sure everything is all nice and clean I did get this uh, from the machine shop back three weeks ago and I kind of started already cleaning everything here uh, for reassembly um, you always want to double check and always make sure you do clean it even though the machine shop does check it clean it they do their inspection and polish things up you still want to go through it again just to make sure there's no loose bits and pieces so I'll do a little example here for this one here so this is the 4AGE crank what I'm going to do is use brake cleaner and basically just kind of clean these little um, polished uh, cranks. So this is like the main crank and this is the rod uh, side and then the main crank side. So um, yeah, I'm just going to clean them uh, again just to show you all how I do it. So I have here some, oh, there we go. Let's do that there here. There we go, that's a lot better I think. Hopefully it doesn't fall down there for me. So I have some uh, lint or lint free uh, rags here. So this is what I use here. And technically you want to use something that's lint free where it doesn't uh, have fiber or anything like that where it can get into the crank. And I think these are pretty good. These are actually like spare OR towels. Uh, thankfully, I, I work in the med field and a lot of people, they actually just throw these away when they don't use them on a patient. So it's just kind of a waste. So after surgery and stuff, if they don't use it, I'll just take it because they end up just throwing it away and it's just a waste. So yeah, I'm going to show you all how I clean the crank here. 
Um, I use brake cleaner. You can technically use gasoline or probably some other cleaner, but this is what I use right now. So what I do first is just kind of soak or get this part here wet here. And I'll show you. I do like one by one too. But I already cleaned this one already, but I'm just doing just one side just to show demonstration purposes. So it goes like that there. Um, there we go. So I'm just cleaning this off here. And you just basically want to make sure that there's no debris and stuff. And you can see even with brake cleaner, you can still a little bit of some gunk left in there. So, you, you know, you still, it's not going to be like 100% sterile, but at least you want to be able to take out a majority of all the particles on reassembly because what kills motor is if a piece of hair or a little bit of dirt or grime is still stuck in the oil galleys, you can actually cause some serious issues here. All right, and for these little holes, these are the oil galleys there. Um, what I use is this guy here, this little um, carb cleaner bristle kit. I actually got this on Amazon a couple years ago when I was um, doing my, you can see there's some hair there too already, but um, when I was doing my first 4AG swap here, my first 4AG motor rebuild, I would use these guys here to clean the oil galley. So what I do here is get like the appropriate size bristle which is probably the thick one here which is this guy here so there we go and then I just kind of just kind of protect it here there we go and then what I'm going to do is just basically just clean it out like that there here and I do that for all of the oil galleys and openings here like I said you just want to make sure there's nothing inside these oil galleys at least that will potentially um, cause issues on, on startup and, and when you have the motor. You just want to avoid you know, as much contamination as possible. So yeah, and I'm just going to just briefly kind of do the whole deal here and do that there. And this part you don't have to worry about because it's mainly the polished areas that you have to really make sure that it's very nice and clean just because this is the rotating assembly where um, basically you know, if a piece of sand or whatever gets in the way, it's gonna score up the bearing and it's not gonna be very, very good. So I'm gonna do this on all the sides here and then yeah, take it from there really. Yeah, I did this earlier, but just to be on the safe side, so it never hurts to be extra clean and stuff here. So yeah, and I'm just gonna just kind of just go for a brief cleaning here. I'm gonna do the main ones here first, just because, or I'm gonna do the whole thing actually. But um, yeah, this is kind of the most tedious part is probably cleaning, but preparation is always key in my opinion. Um, you want to really, really make sure that it's very, very clean. So yeah, a little background on my first motor. Uh, it was my first time ever building or rebuilding a 4AG or any motor for that, for that fact. Um, I never did anything like that before. And I pretty much just used the same manual that you saw on my laptop to rebuild my uh, motor here. And I think, you know, like I said, it, it, I did a probably a good job, I hope, just because it did last me a year and a half before it blew up because of oil starvation. If you've been watching my channel, you know, you'll, I posted a video when my uh, motor blew up on my last race at uh, MSR, or sorry, at uh, Eagles Canyon Raceway in, up in Dallas or near Dallas. So, yeah, and sorry about that. The light does uh, turn off just because it's on a timer and I have no idea how to turn off my or dis disable my timer on my uh, garage light here. So you're gonna see occasionally um, the timer or the sensor kind of turn off here. So I'm just cleaning this all up here making sure everything's all good again here. And yeah, just make sure that, you know, it's all good. So yeah. 
This is just the most tedious part, probably the most boringest too. So I mean, later on you can probably just, you know, speed through the process here. But uh, yeah, I'm just cleaning this all up, making sure it's all nice and clean, extra clean. And um, yeah, this should be it really, you know. Uh, and I'm using gloves too, because I was told that the oils on your hand can actually mess up these polished uh, surface on the cranks. So just to be on the safe side, I'm just using gloves too, just to avoid like, you know, the oil on your hands messing up the crank or the polished side of the crank here. And I definitely say in rebuilding of um, any motor, I'd say a 4AG is a pretty good motor to like learn off of because that's what I learned off of. And um, it's not too terribly hard really um, once you kind of get the hang of it. So yeah, I'm gonna go clean off the oil galley again here. Make sure it's all good. So there we go. And I'm gonna open up my um, vent in the garage here too, just because brake fumes, or brake fluid cleaner fume isn't good for your health. It's actually toxic and you can get pretty high off of it. So don't want that when I'm assembling a motor. All right, so let me go ahead and just go to my garage here to the, and open up the rear door here first. Just cause, uh, yeah, you don't wanna mess it up there. All right, and you can probably hear the sound of my AC cause it's hot as hell in Texas. It's like 90 degrees outside, 80% humidity. You can tell I'm charging up my uh, refrigerator and my Jackery and it takes a, lot, a while cause it's overcast almost, it's been overcast for like the past week or so. And yeah, it's kind of a bummer. I'm just adjusting myself here on this side here. There we go, so you guys can see better. All right. And I'm just cleaning this off here again. It looks all nice and shiny. The machine shop did a very good job uh, inspecting the crank. So what they did for this motor is they just basically inspected the whole motor made sure that everything's still within spec and if it was they just cleaned it and polished it up they didn't bore it out or uh, shave off any extra material uh, with this motor thankfully everything checked out to be still good and within spec so um yeah i, I did that just because to minimize costs um because you know if i had to bore it out or um or you know, do extra work, it's gonna cost extra money. I paid roughly, I think, 500 or $600 to get this motor inspected and cleaned and polished up and honed, uh, basically prepared for reassembly, just the bare basics to do that. And I am reusing this stock 4AG crank because it's still good. Um, not going to, um, I'm not going to buy a new one or change it up if this is still good just because it's gonna be a mainly stock build. It's not gonna be like a 10,000 RPM monster or anything like that or Formula Atlantic type of build. Uh, I'm mainly just building this just for longevity. Uh, in my racing class, I'm still pretty competitive. You know, last race, it was 10 of, or I think it was like six or seven of us in Super Touring at Eagles Canyon and I managed to get third place twice. So I'm pretty proud of that. Um, so I think the car and motor itself is pretty competitive for its class. Um, so I don't really have to, I guess, worry about power mods and things like that as of now. If I ever decide to have more power, I think I'm gonna have to move up a class to like super turning four or five even. And 
Um, I don't think it's worth it for me at this time. The main thing you want to do with racing is that you're, you're basically wanting to build a motor that will last you uh, a season or that will last you for a long time. Last thing you want is a car with you know tons of power and you can't even drive it because it's constantly breaking down or lots of heat issues or blowing up all the time. Um, that's one thing I definitely learned with racing. I know a lot of people automatically want to do power mods and this and that and I'm just like, um, you know, in order to race, you got to have money to do the competition to compete in. And if you're constantly paying for entrance fees and your motor's, you know, constantly giving you issues and stuff, you know, you're not really having fun out there. You're not even winning any races. So I always definitely say, like, reliability is always um, number one. So, yeah. And look how shiny these are. These are, like, hella, hella shiny now. And looking really, really good. Okay, so um, that was pretty much nice and clean there. Um, so you can definitely tell how good it is. You can mark my crank and everything there. So yeah, and I'll, t I'll turn it around for you here too, because on the 4AG motors, you can actually see like what crank it's from by looking at these indentations here. You can't really see it, but it says like 10 and 11. So it tells you what type of crank it is so you can get the right size bearings. But I am going aftermarket though, so I don't, I'm not using to Toyota OEM bearings that I did last time. I'm doing a little bit more suited for racing. But anyways, so that's what you do. You first clean it out, and you also wanna clean out this, uh, your main caps and stuff, which I already did. Uh, but I'll show you, you just flip it upside down there here. Oops, let's go get this guy here. Okay. And then, yep. So, yeah. Uh, just gonna assemble this thing here correctly. Here we go. Alright, so this is what it looks like here. Um, so, I already cleaned this out with a brake cleaner again. Um, basically, this is where the main, this guy right here, the main rod or the main crankshaft bearing goes onto this side here so there you go because you can see it's like that there and the way this is oriented this is the back and this is the front and everything's all marked in orientation so you always want to make sure that you don't mix mat mix and match anything or mess it up so what i'm going to do here first also is make sure that these uh, threads here are uh, cleaned um, obviously like I said the machine shop does clean them out and stuff like that but you always want to be in the safe side and still basically tap it and clean it so I have a tap die set it's like a thread chaser and I'm just going to thread chase each of these holes make sure that it's 100% clean so what I'm going to do here is get here you go this is the uh, the ARP bolts for the main studs here and the machine shop already uh, line boarded and made sure that it is um, to spec because with these bolts these are have a stronger clamping force than OEM so it can technically deform or it can technically throw off the bores in the main line and the machine shop double checks and ensures that it's still within spec. If not, they shave off a tiny bit or whatever to realign it to be factory spec. So the machine shop did that already for me. Uh, and it's, it's definitely, you must do that in my opinion, just because if you don't, you run the risk of everything could be just out of tolerance. And you always still triple check and make sure just because, you know, people can make mistakes and other things like that. So, but anyways, um, they did check it. I'll double check it too, but I'm going to do it like the rudimentary kind of way. So this is the ARP bolts. Um, I'm going to go ahead and thread chase the bolts here first before I put this thing in here. So this is what I do here. I have this measuring tool to see what size diameter I need. So I'm going to do that here. Again, the uh, thing goes down. So it's a 10, size 10 there. And then we have to see what thread pitch it is let me go ahead and close the garage door because I don't think I'll be needing the 
brake cleaner. Any more here? Okay. And plus, it's less quiet. It's more quieter too now. So yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and um, find the right size uh, thread chaser, the thread pitch here. I'm using just a Harbor Freight Special um, tap die set. That's all you really need, and it's like you know 30 or 40 bucks maybe 30 bucks not even hella cheap so yeah uh, it does the job just trying to get the right size here if I can there you go here okay so it's probably on the other side here let me just get this side here okay and you always want to thread chase because I've had experiences in the past where I didn't thread chase uh, and I ended up stripping the bolt just because it was just kind of dirty and that little gunk kind of messed it up. So yeah, it's not, it's not fun. So this looks like it's um, 125 here. I'm gonna double check here, yep, it's a 125. So yeah, as you can see here, 125 here. So it's an M10125. So I'm using this guy again here. And then I have to look for the M10125, which is, is probably this one right here. It's an M10, or it's an M8, sorry. This might be the M10 right here, might be here. Yeah, M10125 here. So this is what I'm going to use to thread chase the block. And I use this guy here too to help me out. So let me show you how I assemble it. So I put that right there. And uh, yeah, so this is the way I do it. And I'm doing ARP bolts because on my first motor build, I used the OEM bolts. And um, it was good, but I'm thinking because of the sustained abuse of just being constantly at redline and upper limits of redline the whole time of its life, I think the stock bolts just gave way and well, I didn't want to say just gave way. I'm pretty sure the all starvation killed it, but um, it did. I'm pretty sure you know the stock bolts. They're technically the OEM used bolts I reused, so that's not smart either. I used my my OEM bolts too, but um, yeah, uh, I'm doing ARP just because they're kind of rated better for uh, racing applications better, and they can probably last a lot longer here too. So. All right, so here we go. So this one's going in. Now I'm going to use this guy to torque it, or not torque it in, but just to thread chase it a bit here. And you just do it by hand. You do it by feel. If it feels like it's going in hard, um, you, it's probably um, not going in correctly. But what I'm doing here is just thread chasing it like this. So I kind of go in a little bit at a time, turn it. And that just kind of helps clear up any gunk and stuff like that before you put the um, um, air peak bolts in. And that's what they recommend on doing too. So that's that there here. And then I'll, like I said, I'll, I'll uh, clean it out again and all that good stuff here. So there we go. And I'm just gonna pull this guy out here. And I do that for every single bolt here. So yeah. Um, this is like the tedious part, but um, you always want to double check and triple check everything goes in smooth and nicely and uh, don't have any issues really. So I'm probably sure for today's video I'm just going to just install the crank so I can just show you all. It's probably a lot easier if I wasn't filming this, but I do want to film it uh, for y'all and you know if maybe hopefully inspire someone that's looking to build a motor um to um yeah just try it out but yeah so i already tapped you know majority of this already like half of the threads here before i started filming but i'm just gonna redo it some more just because i'm ocd like that honestly so yeah but the machine shop did a hella good job cleaning this. Um, I went to Scrogan's machine shop. It's in downtown Houston, if y'all are in the Houston area. And um, they've been doing motors probably for 
pretty long time so I took my uh, Honda head there before to get it resurfaced I even took my old block there last time too to get it uh, clean decked and honed all that good stuff same thing with this one um, they didn't reassemble the motor I was the one that did it but um, they pretty much prepped it for me so that I can do it and uh, yeah that was it so yeah okay it does it really hella nice too okay and this is a 4AG block which is a cast iron block so very heavy but I, I would think to say it's more robust and reliable than like the aluminum blocks like a Honda aluminum block they don't make as much power and they're heavier but you know it's old 80s tech and I think even 90s uh, motor for Toyota they still use aluminum I mean uh, cast iron block so yeah so I'm just uh, oh, this is the one that's kind of annoying I have to do like this here because it hits the, the little guide for the um, oil pan here okay and then yeah I'm just thread chasing them um, not too hard to do um, you don't necessarily have to thread chase your your block but it's always a good idea to thread chase when reassembling a motor just because of the extra just because of possible gunk that could technically um, get into the motor you might not see it it's microscopic or very minuscule that you might not notice it but um, that little small piece of dirt that gets in the oil galley or in the bearings would not be good like what killed my motor was um, oh so it got dark again let me turn this on here again all right Yeah, what killed my motor was the oil starvation and it was like at 15 psi 8000 rpm for a split second and that's all it took to um kill my motor real quick uh, so it's going to be the same with like a piece of grain or whatever small piece of hair even uh gets in the bearings that's it it's not going to last that long and you know it's an engine issue or engine assembly issue if it um, blows up fairly quickly like on startup or not even maybe 50 miles on the motor and it gets totaled. Um, it kind of gives you a hint that possibly that um, it might have been an assembly issue. Now I think if it's been maybe 100 miles and no issues and something happened, it could be something else honestly. Um, but roughly I'd say my guess is if it's been 50 miles or less and the motor you know seizes up it's probably because of an assembly error or assembly issue that has happened so yeah all right so this is the this is the pain in the ass one but I technically did do this one before filming so we're good here but yeah, I tried to uh, kind of prep a little ahead of time for filming, just because, you know, people's attention span is short, so yeah. All right, so I'm gonna put this back up, and then I'm gonna go ahead and then reassemble the motor here. Um, so this is what I'm using. I'm using the race engine bearings. I use this one because like I said, the OEM probably did a good job, but it just, just can't take the abuse of constant high RPMs. I'm pretty sure it didn't cause it to blow up because of oil starvation, but uh, sooner or later it's probably gonna blow up just because it was just a weak link. So that's why I'm doing the ARP bolts to make the bottom end a little bit stronger to handle the abuse of track racing. I'm also using bearings that are kind of designed to handle the abuse of constant racing. If you're just rebuilding a stock motor with just mainly street use, then yeah, just use OEM. Um, no issues there, really. 
it's just mainly if you're constantly planning to abuse it then you might want to beefy up some of the internals just to make it last longer and take and take the abuse better so this is the um, engine bearings here I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this out here first so these are the caps you can see here uh, I have to clean it out first but this is the caps what they look like and they have these little holes and oil galleys for the orientation they are also marked here too so you can't really uh, technically mess this up and I'll show you how because there's only a certain way it can go so if it doesn't go in properly it doesn't feel like it's fitting in properly then definitely um, double check it because there's these little you know indentation and marks to make it align right so yeah I'm just gonna pull this all out here and just lay these out one by one so you all can see here so this is the bottom part this is the part that goes um, here because that's the oil galley part so you can see that there the oil galley goes in there and uh, yeah and then this is the top part of the crank where it kind of goes over here where the caps go right there so you can see here the caps it goes in like that there um, because there is no opening and stuff like that and it looks like it's coated nicely I don't know what they coat this with but I just know it's made for racing so that's why I bought it I don't know the exact specifics of it but it's a race bearing it says it's race so I trust them and this is the what the MRP guys uses too on their race motors and the MRP people are kind enough to um, send me these parts here uh, for me I still you know paid money for this but they gave me a slight discount um, just because they know I'm racing and uh, you know I do appreciate them for helping a fellow racer out and hopefully um, I'll continue on doing this because racing is very expensive you know it's not cheap um, but I do love the hobby and it makes calms me down the street basically so what I'm gonna do here first is clean this all out I'm gonna do that right now with another uh, deal here I got a fresh one here um, just because thankfully I have extras I'm gonna clean this out again with brake cleaner and just uh, make sure that it's all good there here so yeah okay so I'm just going to clean this up here. Okay. So this is what it looks like here. So yeah. Um, I guess this is okay. I'm not so sure, honestly. This looks like it has some markings on it. But um, I'm just cleaning this all up. They don't really come with instructions, unfortunately. Let me just double check here if I'm supposed to clean this up. Because it looks like it might have like some type of coating on here that maybe it's used for initial lubrication. I don't know. But you can kind of tell, I guess. Let's just see here um, how they recommend on doing it. Let's go to the good old internet here and just check here. Uh, ACL race bearings install race bearing install here okay application series okay so let's just see because I noticed yeah it's different in color so it's kind of unusual for that well, it looks like it's a brochure though Okay. Appearance. All right. So questions about the appearance is um, interesting. Okay. ACL race bearing performance series bearings. Blah blah. blah. No applying there. With the plate again causes high spots in black shows. Okay. 
Okay, install. Okay, so it doesn't really say, but on YouTube, it shows ACL race bearings install. And yeah, I've honestly, I've used um, YouTube a lot to figure out a lot of things. So far, it's been pretty good, I think. This one, I can rate it by how many likes it's like, so I can tell it's pretty probably good here. All right, so cool. Let's see here. Hey, it looks like a, uh, oh, like oh, that's different motor, like K24. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so it looks like his ACL race bearings are different. This, uh, solid one. They're like silver. Okay, screw it. Alright, so the other one, it says here that the ACL race bearings do not start out with the silvery, silver gray appearance of regular aftermarket bearings as there is no final silver tin flash applied to these bearings. It is specific design. So we're corrosion resistant. Okay. All right, so I guess we're good. Just gonna just clean it out again and then that's it and then put them in. Okay, well, gonna go clean this out here then. Alrighty, so, yeah, uh, just gonna clean this out here. Okay. Okay. So, I mean... Am I supposed to clean this? I don't even know. Looks like it's just, fuck it. All right, well they look like I guess they're supposed to be cleaned. Um, so I'm just gonna clean this off here just to be in the safe side, I guess. Um, yeah, you can tell here, like they don't look like Typical bearings I've seen before, honestly. Um, but yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to touch them. I'm just going to leave it like this. And just apply, you know, grease lube. Or a motor engine assembly lube on it. Oh, shoot. That's not good. Anyways. Um, see? That's why I'm just recording it. Because I'm not an expert. I'm just a hobbyist, just trying to learn as I go. All right, so I'm just gonna just clean this off just like this here. Um, this is a light coating of um, brake cleaner really on the rag, just to kind of clean it off any impurities that could possibly be in it here. And then, um, yeah, call it a day really. I mean, for race bearings, it's the first time seeing these types of bearings, but yeah, they don't, they don't look pretty at all, honestly. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, okay. The previous bearings I've had, obviously they're nice and shiny and smooth looking and pretty. This one just looks like, did someone use these and then repacked it, you know? But, um, yeah, it looks like for the installation process, um, you know, you don't really need to uh, I guess worry about it, I guess. But I am cleaning it just to be in the safe side. Um, I just don't want to risk messing this up. Okay, so. I'm going to show you how I assemble the, um, deal here. Okay. Um... I'm gonna sh I kind of should see here. It should be here somewhere here. Uh, let's just see here. Okay. So this is how you install it. Reassembly a cylinder block. Thoroughly clean all the parts to be assembled. Before installing, apply new engine oil to all sliding and rotating surfaces. So I'm gonna use uh, engine lube. 
I'll show you what I use and replace old new gaskets and seals, which I do got. All right, so align the bearing claw with the uh, bearing cap of the cylinder block, which is here, and lubricate the faces of the bearings with clean engine oil. All right, so let me show you how I do that. Um, there you go. All right, so that's all good there. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is install this here. Uh, so this is the bottom part of the cap because I just know it because of this guy here. Um, the little hole right here, you just put him in like there, like so here. So you just want to align it right. And you can tell that there is um, a little notch here which aligns to this notch right here so you can see it. So basically just press them in. And I don't put oil here because this isn't... Um, Technically, you're not supposed to put oil here because this bearing is supposed to stay put here. It's not supposed. This bearing is not supposed to spin. If the bearing spins, then you have a spun bearing, which isn't good. So you just push it in like so, and yeah, that's it. Make sure it's nice and flush, which it is, and then repeat for all of the bearings here. I'm still kind of iffy about these bearings, but I'm just like screw it. Okay. You know, apparently the finish on this is supposed to look like this on the ACL race bearings. I only know when I start her up, right? So yeah. Um, so this is nice and flush there. Again, make sure you align the holes correctly. You don't want to do it, you know, like this where they don't line up. Um, you're going to have major issues probably immediately on startup. So yeah. All right, so this is it here. So you just want to make sure it's nice and flush. Make sure it's flush and good there here. Okay. So, yeah. Let me just do this here real quickly here so it doesn't turn off on us here too. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, just put this in here like so. Okay. And as you can tell here, it's looking real nice and pretty there. Um, again, I just lightly wipe this with brake cleaner to clean off any, I guess, uh, gunk that could technically be in here. And then, and brake cleaner is pretty good to have, honestly. Um, I would, I recommend anyone buying a case of it here. So that's what that looks like here. So yeah, let me just, uh, over here, like, so here you can see, you know, the alignment of it's kind of parallel and all that good mess there. Everything's aligned to the holes of the oil galley. So that's looking good there. And then uh, I'm going to show you the engine lube that I use. Um, nothing fancy. It's just a Permatex assembly lube. Technically, you can use whatever motor oil that you plan to run on this car. But I just prefer lube just because I think it's a lot better to use on initial startup. It's a lot thicker and tackier. So this will probably help minimize initial engine wear on startup since the motor will be relatively dry on initial startup. Everything hasn't, the oil hasn't gone through the whole uh, crank and assembly yet. So this is going to help out with that process there. So what I'm going to do here now is kind of just coat the oil here with the lube just go like that here I'll show you there we go so just a tiny dab here you can tell how tacky it is though you can see it's hella tacky and then yeah and you don't have to worry about getting to the oil galleys and stuff just because it's it's um, technically it's still you know good so I'm just putting this here I'm only putting oil where the rotating assembly is going to meet up so um, that's mainly it. I'm not going to just douse the whole block in oil um, technically here. So yep, yeah, just kind of making sure I lube everything up all nice and pretty here. Make sure everything is all nice and lubed up. And I'll just use this guy here to kind of clean it off here. Okay, cool. All right, so that assembly part is done. 
Now, next I'm gonna do here is insert the crank. Now I'm gonna double check again with my handy dandy laptop here. Oopsie, that's why I double check. Install the thrush washers here. So thrush washers, I'm gonna install the upper thrush washers here. And you can tell they're specific because you can look in this, I'm gonna zoom up here. But uh, you can tell like it's these two grooves and you orient these two grooves out there. So yeah, um, just make sure that you keep note of all those stuff there here. So where's the thrush washer? I'm gonna put this one up for a second here. So thrush washer is this guy here. This is what I'm using. Again, it's part of the ACL, I guess, race engine package here. So yeah, uh, let's go ahead and pull this open here. Hasn't even been opened, it's like fresh, fresh. Okay, so these are what they look like. Again, it's not the typical, um, I guess, thrush washers I've seen. They're kind of more polished and sh uh, shiny. This one isn't, but they have these special coatings look like on them. Um, so yeah, you can kind of see the coating and stuff, but um, it's gonna help, I guess, reduce friction and stuff. So what I'm gonna do here, you can tell this is the top part because it doesn't have the notch like this bottom part does. Um, again, this is the bottom part because it has that notch to tell. This is the, the top part here. Um, so uh, you place these grooves on the outside part here. So you're gonna place them out here, like so onto the, you do it on cylinder or the number three here, basically here, uh, the middle part of the main crank here. And then you do the same thing on the other side there too. So that's it there. And like that, see? So not too hard. I'm gonna double check to make sure. So install the thrush washers on the center main bearing with the oil groove facing outward. Okay, did that. Now place the uh, crank inside. Okay, so you're always gonna orient the crank the correct way. So this is the back part because this is where the flywheel would go. This is the front part where the oil pump would go. And again, this is back, this is forward here, okay? So front, back. So I have to switch this crank around here. So I'm gonna set this up here real quickly. Uh, I'm gonna do that right now here. So go like this here. I'm gonna set the crank gently. And you're gonna set it up on this main bearing right here, This the main crank there, the center part. That's where this is gonna rest on. So you're just gonna align it this part to this one right here and just slowly put it in. This is kind of heavy, so just be mindful on, on placement and be very, very gentle on how you do it there, okay? So that's that there, and it's all correct. This is the back, this is the front. Uh, you always wanna make sure your orientation is always right. You don't wanna be you know, switching things around and do it backwards, that's what also kills motor. And I'm also installing the motor myself because Honestly, if I'm the one that blows it up because of my assembly error, um, I'm not gonna be that mad because I'm the one that messed up. Now, if someone else that I paid money for to assemble the motor and that's what their job is to assemble the motor, they've been doing it for a while and they mess up, I'll be hella mad because I paid you for that. In most cases, they're not gonna refund you your money because of their error. Um, they're going to just be like, sorry, man, like it happens. You know, and it's not fun. So I'd rather mess up myself than pay someone to mess it up. So yeah, that's also another thing why I assemble the motor myself too. Anyways, okay, so I put the crank in. Now install the main bearing caps and lower the thrush washers. And the lower thrush washers, okay. So each bearing cap has a number and front mark. So I already took pictures of this earlier, but I'll show you how it's done too. And you can also tell here. Um, so this is, they show you the orientation with the front side and the front goes, I'll uh, bring it closer here. Basically the front goes one, two, three, four, five, and the arrows are all pointing to the front. So again, a lot of motors have these orientation marks, so you always have to make sure. So these are my bearing caps. I also cleaned up my bearing caps here too. 
Um, so this is number three. And number three is gonna be in the middle here first where the thrush washers are at. And um, basically, uh, you're gonna install it like the orientation here. So this is number three. I don't know if you guys can see it. And the arrow is pointing, going this direction here. So this is basically the front, okay? So you assemble it like that. You don't assemble it like this where the arrow is going the back part. No, you want the arrow facing the front part. So always make sure you do that, okay? I'm gonna give it one final clean here again. And then um, after all this, I'm probably, once I'm done assembling this, I am gonna put a little light coat of oil on all the assembly stuff just because um, this is gonna be covered in oil too anyway. So I'm just gonna put a light coat of oil here real quickly too. I didn't think about that, but I probably maybe should later on. Not right now, I guess. We'll just see. Doesn't say in the service manual. But anyways, um, this is how you assemble it. Put the thrush washer here like so. Obviously it has an indentation, so that's how you can also tell that you're doing it right. So there we go. And then the nice golden part faces out with the grooves. Again, you do that on the other side here too. The funny thing is it doesn't show to put the bearing caps on here. Let me double check because you're supposed to put the bearing caps. See, we're learning as we go. Um, let's see here. Oh, okay, never mind. Also, it's the same thing here. So I'm gonna do that too real quickly here. Install the other side there too here. See, if I did not do that, I probably would have screwed myself. Okay, so first I'm gonna do here is just align the um, bearing caps to the main cap here. So these are the bearing caps, and again, again I'm gonna just show you what these are here. Looks like this is standard size bearings too. So um, oil clearance matters with the type of size bearings you have. So these are standard size bearings. Um, so I, I did standard size bearings because I didn't do any modifications to the crank. So now, for example, if you had this crank machined and shaved a bit because, you know, there's imperfections or something, then that means there's less uh, clearance or less uh, mass in the crank. So it's actually smaller. So what you want to do is get thicker bearings to compensate for the potential gap that can happen when you decrease the size of the crank and um, still be within oil clearance spec. Now some people, they like to mix and match it to get like the specific uh, oil bearing clearance, but that's mainly for like really high horsepower, you know, applications, very tight clearances and stuff. This is a mostly, like I said, a stock bill with just additional upgraded parts just to handle the extra stress of racing so nothing too crazy so i did standard size for a standard size for a standard size crank nothing was done to it to modify it or anything like that just cleaned and polished but you always want to make sure you got the right bearings too so this is standard size acl stamping um so yeah uh, always keep that in mind and again this one has like little grooves or little notches here that kind of aligns to these notches here too. So you can't, you know, mix and match it. You have to align it properly where it goes to the right uh, alignment. So that's what I'm gonna do now with this guy here. I'm just gonna place the caps onto here and just push them in. That's all you gotta do is just push them in here. Okay, and then push it in. And that's how it looks like, just like that there. So you can see it's all like aligned properly. Um, you just want to make sure it's nice and flush here. It's all aligned here too with the cap there. Also on this side you can tell it's, it's nicely aligned. So I'm going to do that to all of the caps here. So I'm just going to put this guy back up in here. Three. And I'm just going to put these right here. Okay, so I'm going to start off with one first. So this is one. So that's one. And then I'm going to do this swing here. Two next. And I'm not going to put engine oil on it just yet or um, lube it up just yet because I'm going to check the bearing clearance. Um, the shop did check the clearance and all that but I'm going to show you all how I would do it the rudimentary way just to double check and make sure I'm still within spec. Again just push the the bearings in and that's it there so you see it has these little 
grooves there here so it's all good so yep and then I'm going to put this in one and then number two here let's do that here and technically these bearings aren't necessarily numbered to, to the specific cylinder they're all the same it's just they have these orientation marks so you can uh, align it properly to the main bearing cap so yeah just always make sure and be aware of the assembly process of each cap here so yeah that's it there and again always clean it up and make sure it's all nice and clean um so yeah so that's what it looks like these bearings don't look pretty honestly but you know like i said acl did this on purpose i guess um it's not the shiny clean new bearings that you would typically get this looks like bearings that's probably been in a race or something but yeah again it's all nice and flush and aligned right there so that's two I already did three and I'll double check so that's three right there too so that's all good there and then we'll do four so this is four here I'm gonna put this underneath here and then I'm gonna assemble this right here like so here and just push it down that's all you gotta do is just push it down and then that's it there it's aligned properly and everything um, so yeah that's it all right and then uh, I'm gonna do this guy here too next. I have a little tear in my glove, so let me just put another glove on this side here, just double glove. I have tons of gloves too, and I do pay for these. I don't steal them at the hospital or anything like that. Um, I'm not like that. The only thing I would take is just these because they're one-time use, and they always throw them away after a patient use, so I'm not going to go to waste. But gloves, I definitely do buy myself. All right, so um, again, I'm gonna line the cap here again. All right, there we go. There we go. All right, so cap is aligned properly. So that's how it looks like there. All right, so looking good. A little dirt there. I might just wipe this off a tiny bit. Okay, there we go. All right, sweet. All right, so that's all good there. All right, so now I'm gonna Put the caps in now first i'm gonna do is the cap number three here first so yep there we go align it again to here and also here that's it and then uh that's all good there all right so before i actually put this in to cap number three i'm going to show you um how i check for bearing clearance. So now obviously you can tell here that the oil galleys are showing, right? So I'm gonna f turn this 90 degrees basically so that I can get a clean sample of here. So this is where I'm gonna put my plastic gauge on here, on these side here. So I'm gonna do here is just clean up one more time here just to make sure I don't, I don't get the oil in there. And I'm gonna just double check and make sure that I'm all good here on this side here. Okay. I'm always just double checking. It never hurts to double check or triple check your work. Especially when assembling a motor. It's a very fine process here. It's not um, something you can technically um, just rush okay so yeah okay all right so that's it there okay i'm gonna clean it again later i'm just um gonna make sure that my bearing clearances are correct here so let me show you how it's done here for that um so i use this plastic gauge here um basically i'm gonna pop this slightly open it's just pieces of uh, wax that I use okay and then um, you have these measuring stuff so when you smush down the wax you're gonna see what bearing clearance these are I already pulled that cut off a piece so it's a lot easier for me to tell um, so when they get smushed it shows you if it's like let's see here this is in millimeters here like 0 0.05 0 0.38 0 0.025 stuff like that so um, so yeah, I'm gonna just show you what I do here for that. It's gonna be like a fine process here. All right, so let's just uh, 
I'm gonna place a small strip on each side of the crank here, of the main crank. I'm gonna do it all at once just to make it all uniformed. And then we make sure that we clean it off too here. So, so that's a small piece here. You wanna place it technically um, 90 degrees or diagonal to the uh, crank here, to each crank side here. So that's that there here. All right, so I'm placing it right there here. Okay. Oops, where is it here? Nope, let me see here. Okay, so I think I might have dropped it. Shoot, I dropped it. That sucks, okay. Let me do it again. Ah, it's so hard to film and assemble at the same time here. That's why people rather not film it. But I'm doing it for me and for anyone else that wants to tackle assembling a uh, motor, really. It's hard work, but it's uh, also satisfying when you get it running right. All right, so that is correct there here too here. So that's that there here. Okay, so that's one. So you can see the assembly here. Okay, so that's one here, two here. Okay, so that's one. Then I'm gonna put one here too also. I should use tweezers for this, honestly. Such a fine process here. So that's one. I got one right there too. And then I'm gonna put uh, three here too next. And you gotta be very, very steady too with this. Um, it's like very crucial. It's like I'm doing surgery or something. Okay. All right, so just place it like right in the middle here and kind of centered to the crank here too here, just so that you can get a really good accurate measurement here. All right, so one, two, three. And then two more here. This is the rudimentary way to eat. The more accurate way is using a dial bore gauge, but honestly, the machine shop did that already for me. But, you know, trying to show it for y'all here, how you can do it at home. This is the easiest way and less complicated way to do it too. But I do have my dial bore stuff there too, so yeah. Okay, so one last one here. Okay. I'll put this up right here. Okay. Okay, here. All right, so. Okay. All right, so that's all good there. Let me just show you real quickly with a light, um, the flashlight maybe. Okay, so let me get this guy out here. There we go. Okay, so you can see here, that place the, um, you can kind of see like the angles of the plastic gauge is just right in the middle and that's it. So yeah, um, so you can do. And now, now we're gonna put the caps in now. So I'm gonna show you how I do the caps. So first one is cap number three. Again, you wanna orient it correctly to where the arrows facing the front or pointing to the front and you wanna align it to the right number too. So this is main bearing number three, which is right here. This is where the thrust bearings go. So I'm gonna put that right here first. Okay here. Oh, actually I should maybe hand tighten the thing here first here, but I don't know. Let me just do this again here. Oof, it's so tight. And there we go, okay, so that's in there, okay. All right, so this is bearing number one here. Okay. All right, so 
so there we go. I feel like maybe I should uh, possibly put the studs in first. Ugh, oh well. Yeah, I should probably put the studs in first before anything else here. So my bearing stuff is all good there. I'm going to show you how I put the main studs because it's a little bit different process than like um, the after then uh, stock studs. And I'm planning to put this one on here too, the little main bearing cap. So basically you want to put assembly loop. This has already been, like I said, checked in, um, at the shop for the for line boring and everything, everything checks out. So I'm just gonna reinstall this here. You wanna use uh, assembly lube here, which I am using this guy here for the thread here. Um, so I'm just going to pull that out. Get a nice good glob here. Okay. And then this is the top part because it has the Allen part here. And I already read the instructions, but basically you want to Hand, put this in hand tighten it so basically it says here um, lubricate the threads nuts and washers of the you know assembly lubricant which is this guy here the special kind and then um, hand tighten it here too so uh, let's see here so So install the main studs into the block hand tight using oil or lube. But I'm gonna lubricate it using this thing here, so yeah. So yeah, I guess I can use this thing here. Alright, so I'm gonna show you how I do it. Just gonna put this guy in here. I'm just gonna hand tighten it because that's what it recommends on. Okay, so I guess it's still going in nicely here. Probably use like an Allen key here just so it can be a lot easier to kind of tighten it up, honestly. You know, I'm learning as I go. That's how it goes. Let's just see here. Right, so this one fits nicely here, so it's a four. Okay, so I'm just gonna just lightly put it in. And then, yeah, should hopefully work here. There you go. Okay, that's in there. Looks like that's in pretty well there too. So yeah, it's nice and tight. Well, not too tight, but just hand tight, really. And I'm gonna do that on every single one here. So I'm gonna put this guy right here. And then, yeah, just assemble it. Hopefully, I'm doing this all right, but screw it. You know, you live, you learn. That's what I always say. So yeah, uh, this little piece, piece of uh, lubricant here. Try to lubricant here. Okay. I'm just gonna just do like this here. And just, whoop. Just like that, ARP studs. And let me go ahead and uh, fix up the light again here. There you go. Okay. Okay. So there we go. Let's so hopefully you're all getting a good view of this. Okay. There you go, so it stopped. All right, putting more lubricant here again. So, yep, just gonna throw these in by hand here. And then just being extra, extra careful. I still got the plastic gauge on the, 
on the crank still. Oh shoot, see? There we go, just drop this guy. There we go. So there you go, just uh, going to, you always gotta be nice and slow and yeah. This is gonna be raw and edited too. I'm like, not gonna edit anything. Just gonna post this up on YouTube and hopefully be informational to anyone that wants to do a motor swap or a rebuild. I mean, not a swap. Okay. And then here we go. Some more lube here. Okay. Here we go here. Sweet. I'm going this side here next. All right, here we go. Was like that there, just nice and easy. So this is the part. Technically, if you had OEM studs, you didn't have to do this. But um, this is for the ARP install only. Um, if it was just a OEM stud, you just put the cap on and then put the stud in. That's it. But this is like the extra step here. So, yep. Oh, now I'm going to put this one back here. I'm going to take this one off here. I'll do that last, actually. So there you go. I'm just going to this side here, too, here. So I'll just uh, nicely place in here. Goes in nicely, though. Thread chasing definitely makes it a lot easier to uh, assemble uh, some threads here, thankfully. Okay. All right. Almost 4 p.m. here. Been about roughly an hour now. Okay, and like I said, this ARP studs is just going to make it take the abuse of the racetrack a lot better versus the OEM ones. Um, yeah, for street applications, I don't think you really need to use ARP bolts technically. I think OEM is just fine unless you're pushing a lot of horsepower and stuff. Then yeah, then I definitely recommend ARP here. But yeah, that's it there. Okay. And then I gotta do this other two here. Alright. It's assembly, special assembly lube here. Okay. Doesn't really say how much I should put in the lube, but I'm just like, screw it. You know, it's just lube. I don't think it's gonna hurt you. Technically, they say you can lock tight these if you plan to put it, the studs in a permanent deal. But, um, eh, don't need lock tight. I do have lock tight though, but I don't think I'll need it for this. There you go here. Oh, again, with the light turning on and off here. There you go. All right. Yeah, it's like 4 p.m. and it's like getting hot in Texas. I wish my garage was AC'd, honestly. But at least it's protected from the elements, though, which is good. I kind of want that. Okay. 
okay here. There we go. And I still gotta do my um, other deal here too here. Okay. So I'm going to remove the main cap on that side there too here. There we go. By hand. Then two more, which will be this guy here, which will be very, very gentle on. That here. Okay. Okay. Okay here. All right, so I still got my deal here too here. Okay, just gonna align that there better. There we go. All right, sweet. All right, so that's that there. Now I'm gonna do this one here. So yeah, just gonna just lubricate this guy here. There we go. I guess assembling a motor isn't too hard, it's just very tedious and time consuming and I guess you still have to be precise, you just can't like just slop it all together and then call it a day I think. So that's the thing. Okay. And then this guy here too next. So yep. Okay, just uh, turn this out like so here, there we go, nice and easy, there you go, alright, alright, there you go, alright, so next, now I can put my dust bearings on here, so. Alright, so this is one. Again, like I said, arrow goes this way, facing the front. Double check, yes. Okay, so that's the one here. Alright, so I'm going to put this guy like so here. Okay. And then two bearings on there. All that good stuff there here. Everything looks nice and pretty. Again, arrow facing the front here. So I'll just slide that in here too next. And then three here, which is this guy here. So again, face it like this here. And again, face it like this here. And then do like so here. Okay. And then four. Again, bearings look good. Four here. Okay, and then five here, okay, so, oops, see, this is why I check here, I just slapped on the four on the opposite side, so you always gotta double check, arrow is facing this way, you gotta face it this way here, going to the front, so there we go, there we go, alright, so next is this here, I'm installing ARP main caps here, just like I said, for longevity-wise, technically, you know, this motor is going to be tracking all of its life. Not even going to be street-driven anymore. Just basically racing. So it's going to be high RPMs at 7,000, 7,500 RPM, 7, RPM. So just to make it last a bit longer, MRP sells these main caps to um, make the engine block a bit stronger from the rotational forces of high RPMs. Or constant RPMs um, and thanks again ARP you know obviously they did give me a small discount wasn't really huge but they did help me out with since they know I'm racing and stuff so I do appreciate that um, there's technically no orientation on how to install the caps here it's either or really it just says um, installation remove OEM main studs install 4AG ARP main studs which I do have 
Place reinforcement caps over the main caps, and then install nut washer. This is not install the nut, but remove the washer. This is not needed. Okay, so here we go. I want to do the logo for MRP, probably facing that way here. So there you go. Looks so pretty too. Look at that. Damn. Okay. So I'm gonna just do that for all all of this sets here too. Here, all nice and pretty. All right. So MRP goes like that here, and MRP here, so nice and pretty, look at that. And I already did clean this beforehand, so yeah, I just used brake cleaner really, and that was it. Bam, so pretty, look at that, look at that. And then um, obviously I put the plastic gauge already inside. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna squeeze down on the plastic gauge, which is basically a thin piece of wax. And then it's gonna give me basically my clearance for the bearings. And I'll show you all that after this here. So for the main caps, I don't need to put the washer on here, just the nut. So I'm gonna lubricate the nut and then also make sure I got the right size here. So let's just get the right size. Let's just see here. And these are multi-star looking um, uh, caps here. So. Let's just see if I get the right one here. Uh, let me see here. I might, oh, is this millimeters? Uh oh, shoot. I don't even know if I have the right socket. Let me see here. I have to, okay, so it might be a, let's just see here. So it is a 12 millimeter socket multi point. So there we go. And then what I'm gonna do here is gonna uh, just hand tie these first and I'll show you how you torque them to spec here too here. So I probably won't need this guy here. Just took out a habit here. Okay. So let me show you how I do that here. Okay, so I'm gonna put engine lube or ARP lube on here first. Put that right there. And I'm gonna just hand tie in each of these caps here by hand here. Okay, so there we go, there we go, there we go, all right, so like that there, just get them started. Okay, and hopefully this video would be instructive for some of y'all that wants to, you know, start this quest too of building a motor and all that good mess too, you know. It is satisfying to build your own motor you get more familiar with your car kind of know what's up with it when something goes wrong um, you know when I first did this I didn't know anything about building motors or nothing you know I don't even work on cars for a living this is just my hobby you know I'm more of a driver honestly than anything else I'd rather drive and drive fast at the racetrack versus working on my own motor but this helps me save money because like I said, racing is hella expensive. Like, you're gonna have to kind of make sacrifices in your life, like what's important. And if you figure out racing is important to you, well, you're gonna have to make some sacrifices to where, so you can afford to go racing and have fun. You know, you gotta make that choice. There we go. So I'm not using the nuts on here because uh, I have the main bearing caps on here. So, yep. And you just want to make sure they're all good there here. Okay. So yeah, um, hopefully I get done before six. So yeah, uh, hopefully I still got some. I have 32 minutes left in here. Okay. Alrighty here. So I got an hour and 32 minutes left in my memory card. So yeah, I'm hoping um, it won't be too, it won't die out. But if it dies out, I'll just do like part two or three, whatever. And call it a day. Just uploaded. Just continuation, really, of uh, what's going on. You know? Okay. Nice assembly lube, lube up everything. 
Okay. So, yep. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just make sure got that there going because I want the light to go off there here. Okay. Last but not least, this guy here too next. Ooh, we got some shit on here. I don't know what the fuck that was, but whatever man whatever okay and I did get like I said the whole studs lined and bored and all that good mess because you know obviously it's stronger so the I guess the holes could be tweaked some wrong way and stuff like that so that's what the machine shop checks for they technically have the extra machines for that I don't have so yeah all right so I'm just gonna hand tighten this here first here and then I'm gonna show you how I um, um, torque it down here okay okay and I do inside to outside that's how you want to reassemble the crank inside to outside and if you're going to disassemble the crank it's outside to inside okay and you kind of do like a star pattern here just so that it gets uniformly uh, crushed or um, yeah I guess crush is the right word okay here all right okay Okay, so now it's supposed to be 60 feet torqued. So it says right here, use a manufacturer's torque sequence, but do not use the engine manufacturer's torque spec. Torque the nuts is 60 feet. So I'm gonna do it in three passes. So I'm gonna torque it to 20 pounds, then 40, then 60. And I'll be using my Teton or Tecton uh, torque uh, deal here. So. Let's do a 20 pound feet first here. Make sure it says 20 pound, uh, 60 pound foot, not like the weird whatever. Let's see here. 60 feet, foot pounds, so yeah. So I'm gonna do like uh, 20 foot pounds first. Okay here, so 20 foot pounds, there you go here. Okay, I'm gonna do basically middle to outside here. So one, and you want to like just do one sweeping motion here too here. Okay. Something fell down, let me fix that up here. Okay, so when you torque it and you feel like some resistance already, you want to just do it to where it just stops here. Like, like that. You don't want to be like, eh, eh, then torque it. Nope. So yeah, you just wanna just make sure. I'm just gonna just do like this here. I wanna use an impact, but it's not good to do that. Okay, so I felt some resistance there, so you're gonna do like this. When you feel a little bit of some resistance, and then just keep on sweeping it to clicks, there you go. And then you always wanna reset it like so here again. So I'm just gonna do like this here till I feel it get hard by hand. You wanna be gentle. Okay, there you go, and then it's gonna go like this. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see. There you go, just like that. There here, just like that. There you go. Okay, and then I'm gonna go like this here again, like so here, till I feel a little bit resistance here. And then they say there's resistance. I'm gonna do one clean swoop to 20 foot pound. Like that, just like that. You don't want to be like, eh, then stay like that. Nope, nope, just one clean swoop. So, I'm just going to do like this here till I feel it get a little bit hard. Like right now, a uh, little bit here. Okay, there we go. All right, so now, I'm going to go like this here. There you go. 
you hear that click and you want to get yourself a nice good branded um, torque wrench because if you get yourself a cheap one um, it's not going to be good it might even break something so I'm going to do equal passes here oh, the uh, thing died again here we go okay So that's all good there. Did that there. Now do this outside parts here. So go like this here again. You just want to crisscross it again here. Okay. Okay. I kind of feel some resistance here now. Here we go. No, nope. Nope. JK. Okay. Here's some resistance here. Oh, fuck. Did I just break this? No, no, I didn't. Oof. Okay, there we go. That's good. Son of a bitch. That was crazy. That's all unedited stuff there. Okay, so I feel like it's uh, good there here. There we go. And I'm going to like this side here too next. There we go. Okay. There we go. Feel the resistance there. Okay, and go like this here. Let me just fix this up. There we go. Fixing the camera up here for y'all. Okay, so that's some resistance there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and there we go. Now to 40 foot pounds here. So we're gonna go 40, then to 60. And you don't want to move the crank as much as you can because obviously you got the plasti dip there. So Okay, so the battery died. Um, I ba I torqued it down, so I'm gonna you know add the video in together. It's not gonna be great, but whatever. Um, so I torqued it down to 20 foot pounds. Now I'm gonna do 40 foot pounds here. So I put it at 40 here, 40 foot pounds. All right, then again start in the middle, and I'm gonna just do it to here. Click just like that. You want to do it like one clean swoop here. So again, just like this to here, click, that's it. You don't want to be like, eh, eh, then click. Nope. You just want to be nice and smooth and clean about it here. So I did that, then go down here. There you go. And then this will be. And then here. Okay. And then that and then like that there and then like that okay and then like that there okay and then like that there and then now 60 and you want to it says to several passes so I, I feel like 20 40 60 is the best way to do it at I'm using a nice branded torque wrench too so that um, I don't mess it up with the torque settings here too. So yeah. All right, so here you go. This is 60 now. All right, getting really tight now. It's getting hella tight. Okay. Okay. And after this, we're gonna check with the Torque settings are after this here. Okay. There you go. Okay. Alright. And I did this, this, this. And like this here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. I think I did this though, right? Didn't I? Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Cool. Whew. Okay, cool. Just making sure. Okay, so 60. All right. So this is all now torqued to spec. Now, in order to check the bearing clearance, now you have to disassemble it again, which is kind of the pain in the ass part. But um, I'm doing it for y'all so y'all can tackle it yourself too.
if you guys want to. Doing this again just to make sure. All right, there we go. All right, so for the disassembly, you have to, um, let me use a breaker bar here to make it a lot easier on myself here. You're gonna have to break it from outside to inside, basically. And um, yeah, let me go ahead and get my my torque adapter here, or my adapter deal here. There you go, there you go. And what I'm gonna do here is just basically go out, 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 then in, 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 okay? So at least we'll know what um, bearing clearance we're at. So, all right, so I'll do like 190 degree. Like this here, there we go. And I'm not moving the crank at all, so yeah. But it's definitely hard, it's not easy. Okay, there we go here, there we go. And I'm just doing this outside to inside. That's the sequence of, um, Removing anything that's under pressure, really. Last thing you want to do is, uh, you know, bend the crank. So yeah, that's the only thing. Okay, then you go outside again here. Okay, one full rotation here. Let's do like one full rotation, so it'll be a lot easier. Now I'm going to use my impact to, on my small gun to Remove it. Everything's all loose hand tight for me. So yeah, that's a good sign. Everything's not under pressure anymore. They're not under tension, yep. Everything is nice and good here. Okay, that's good, they're here. Okay, time to use my gun. Obviously, you can use a ratchet, whatever, or remove it by hand. But I'm going to use my uh, drill that I got, or my impact that I have here. Okay, and let me just uh, set this up here too. All right, so outside to inside again. So outside. Okay, I'm gonna put this probably, or should I put this like right here, I'm guessing. Yeah, I'll just do that down here. Okay, and I'm just gonna kind of do it, assemble it to where I guess these go originally at. I don't think it really matters, but I kind of OCD like that, so yeah. Okay, so it goes like right there. Goes like right there here. Okay. Okay. And we're gonna reassemble this again. We just have to check what um bam bam bam. What this says here. Okay. Now we're gonna remove the caps, which I think might be harder than it is just because it's uh, it's on there here. That's the hard part here. Let's see, because it's, it's all torqued down, so it's going to be really hard to remove this here. Mm -hmm. I should probably remove the caps one by one here, too. Here. So I'm going to do like that there. One by one. One by one here. One by one. Okay. One by one. One by one here. Okay, so one by one here. Okay. Oof, if I can remove this guy here, shoot. Damn, this is a hard one. Okay. That's kind of tight there. Okay. Alright, so how am I supposed to remove this here? 
I think I might have to use some clamps here to kind of get it out. See, that's the hard part. Sometimes there's no instructions. They're just like, oh, go right at it. Well, how are you supposed to go at it, you know? I'm just going to clean this off just to be decently clean so it doesn't get all messed up here, hopefully. Okay. All right. So... Huh, I don't know how to remove this here. Can this thing go like this? Nope, nope, nope. Can it? Nope. Oh, I know. Loosen this here, because honestly, to remove this, you have to kind of use the studs to pick them up. So I am going to do that here. So basically, I'm going to redo everything that I did here. So I'm removing this by hand here. Okay, and doing that here. And I'm going to redo everything else again here because I have to. Okay, see, this is why you don't lock tight. Well, technically, you lock tight it after you check the, the bearing clearance here, which I'm doing right now here. So, yeah. Okay. Very tedious work, but you always gotta double check, you know? That's the uh, hard part here. Okay, so now I can just go like this here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so you can see here what, um, you made like a little indentation there. Not indentation, but a little marking. So that's what you're going to measure there for um, clearance. So I'll put this right here for now. And then let's measure that here first and then clean it out. And then we'll take out the rest here just so I can show you all. So what I'm using is the millimeter side here. Not the inches, but the millimeter. It's just a lot easier for me. So let's just see what it says there here. Um, so let's see here. Mm, looks like let's see here. It looks like it's like a point zero two five. Not too bad. Yeah, point zero two five looks like here. Oh, there you go. So you guys can see here. So uh 0.038. Let's get a cleaner one. Let's just see if there's any difference here. Let's just see here. Okay. I'm just going to cut off this piece here. Just so we can probably see better here. Okay, so this is millimeter here. Okay. So, yeah, let's just see this here. What it says. Okay, so let's just see this here. So it's at um, 0 0.025. Okay. Looks like here, 0 0.025, I think. Yeah, a little bit skinnier. It's a little bit over 0 0.038, but. 0.025 so between there so let's just check the spe specs that's a little bit kind of tight I think but still within specs so let's just see this here let's move this guy out all right so let's just see the bearing clearance here real quickly here all right so uh, let's see what the bearing clearance says here So standard 0 0.015 to 0 0.033. So I am within spec. Yeah, boy. All right, so 0 0.025 seems to be the consensus that I have. And um, yeah, so next thing you gotta do is you def, oh man, see, see what happens? I kind of move things around and messed it up a tiny bit there. Uh, there it is, I was looking for my, deal here. I'm going to leave that right there. 
Now I'm gonna go remove the rest and then I'll clean it out afterwards here. All right, so I'm gonna remove, I'm gonna remove it from outside to inside again, just to be on the safe side. Um, I don't think it really matters at this point, but yeah, um, just to be on the safe side, I'm just gonna do it like that down here. I just wish my, um, what you call it, my uh, uh, light didn't always come off every like 10 minutes or so, but I really don't know how to change the memory on my house here. So yeah. Well, hopefully you guys are finding this informative. If not, it's probably putting y'all to sleep because my voice is hella monotoned. It's not exactly a voice where people might want to listen to, but hey, if you have insomnia and cannot sleep, I can definitely be the voice for y'all to go to sleep. So yeah, awesome, right? Okay. So technically, I'm just double checking the bearing clearance, but if it's been checked already, which the shop did for me, you don't have to do what I'm doing, but just to show y'all how to do it with the plastic gauge. Um, things I do for y'all. Okay. Oh shoot, this is kind of hard too now here. There we go. Okay, so it makes, it makes like a little indentation there too, so you can definitely see it. Let's just see what this one says here. So it's a 0 0.25 then. Nice. You kind of see it there, 0 0.25. It's, it's too small for the 0 0.38, 0 0.25. It's just right. So I'm going to put that right there here. Again, double check it here too. Oops, there we go. Don't want the crotch shot, right? 0 0.25. So basically, yeah, it's doing pretty well there. Um, so far, so good. And I'm checking the bearing clearance on each rod. Um, yeah. There's, you know, there's another way on YouTube how you can do it with a dial bore gauge and all that good mess. And I can, I don't want to do that. It's just too, I mean, I did it before I sent it to the um, shop just to make sure I'm doing it right. So maybe next motor, hopefully this will last me for a very long time, but maybe next motor I rebuild. Um, I can show you how I do it with a dial bore because um, it's a lot more accurate than just a plastic gauge. But, you know, if all you got is plastic gauge, it's way cheaper than a dial bore. I'm actually borrowing my friend's nice dial bore gauge. It's like a JDM, me in Japan, precision gauge. So, yeah, um, you want to get yourself a nice, good measuring tool for it uh, when you're doing this. You don't want to get no cheap knockoffs here. Okay, so look at it. See, you can see again what it looks like. Again, let's just see here with this greasy ass, uh, this inches. Okay, so this is a millimeter here. So this is um, 0 0.25 again, also here, too, here. So yeah, 0 0.25. Look, yeah. Okay, so that's that there here. Okay, again, measure it here again, too. 0 0.25 on that green line there, perfect. And you wanna measure the widest part of the plastic gauge too. So um, that's one thing you wanna remember is measure the widest part of the plastic gauge. That's what you want to do here. And I'm covered in grease and stuff, but it's okay, at least it's grease. Not, or lube, assembly lube. After this, I'm gonna lube up the whole assembly and I'll probably call it a day because I still gotta cook dinner. And it's almost five o'clock. It's it's four thirty-four. Still gotta cook dinner. So yeah, and I love cooking too. That's my other passion is cooking. I don't know if you guys follow my IG, but I also cook. And um, one of those things I love to do too is cook. I try to cook something where I would eat at a restaurant. You know, not something I wouldn't eat at a restaurant. Okay. There we go here. All right, so let's just see this one here. This one looks a little bit smaller. Maybe 0 0.38 here. So 0 
0.38 possibly yeah 0 0.38 here which is still fine I'm not worried about it still within spec yep 0 0.38 here 0 0.38 okay cool all right let's just double check it here though uh, let's just see here oh, oh there we go again let me go ahead and uh, get this going here okay let's just see the size here let's just see here um actually 0 0.25 uh, 0 0.38 looks like there okay so all right, 0 0.38. Let's just see this one here, too, next. So it's still within spec, not too worried. I know the guys at my non-racing said, like, even looser cl clearance is 0 point or 0 0.05, which is hella loose, is uh, preferred for racing, they said. I know my M3, I think the M3 clearances were hella tight. Um... I think a lot of F1 cars and motors too, um, they're also super duper tight too, so yeah. Um, other than that though, that's it. Okay. Last but not least, I'll check this one here. Okay. Oof, this is tight. This is all off here. Oof. This is going to be the hard one. Oh shit. Mm hmm damn, dude, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Damn. Ah, it's getting there, though. Slowly. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Damn, this is hard. Ouch. Damn. Oh, there we go. Whew. Okay, so I popped that out. There you go. That works. Ah, okay. Alright, so that's that there here. Let's move these guys out of the way. Okay. Let's see this guy's out of the way here too. Alright, there you go. Alright. So let's measure this one. This one looks like 0 0.252 here. Look how dirty this got though, right? So let's just see here again. Um, I don't know if you all can see it, but 0 0.252 at the widest. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to start cleaning all of this mess here. Whew. Okay, so yeah, um, you want to make sure you clean off the plastic gauge. Um, where's my trash here? I have a trash can here somewhere. There we go. Here's a trash can here. Um, but yeah, you want to make sure that you clean off the plastic gauge very well. And um, yeah, that's it. So I'm going to use good old brake cleaner. Wipe it off, basically. It's not too hard. I'm going to do that to the bearings too here. So yeah. Let's put this down here. Let's just... Got some dirt on the camera too here. Okay, so just like that, it's uh, clean. Just like that there here, so. Good old um, brake cleaner for the win. You don't need anything else really. Brake cleaner is a really good dissolvent or cleaner or solvent for cleaning things, it dries up fast. It reminds me of an alcohol wipe a little bit here. But yeah, look at that. Just like that. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do is reassemble my uh, deal here again. All right, so at least I got that part down. Let's uh, put again lube on here. Kind of repeat the whole process now since we all know it's like 0.025 is the um, is my bearing clearance here. I'll make a note of it later too. Uh, I should probably write it down right now for the bearing caps so I don't uh, forget about it here. Mm. 
Where it is? Oh, here's a pen here. I'm just going to uh, do it here first. So I'll do main bearings, main. Uh, let's do 0 0.025 millimeters. Just to verify, I think it's right here too here. 0 0.025, yep, 0 0.025. Okay, so, all right, so that's that there. Okay, and then let's do that. I'm just going to splice the videos together here so at least y'all can see. Oh, thought I did that deal here. There we go. Okay. Alrighty, so again, let's uh, put this in here again. And then, yeah, call it a day there. Here we go. So I'm just going to put this up here. Alrighty, hand tighten it again. At least we know it's all in spec. So that's that there. Again, loop this guy up. At least they gave you, at least uh, APR gives you lots of lube, man. That's pretty good. Can't have enough lube, as I always say. Oops, kind of slippery there, too. Okay. Okay, so that's in. Just gonna hand tie in this guy here too, like so, till it stops. And then yeah. Uh, just glad it's all within spec now. Apparently, I guess ARP is the good stuff, right? On my M3, I actually had ARP bolts too on it when I started tracking it. I changed the bearings to like a more race oriented bearing. They're like VAC coated. Supposedly it's less friction, makes it glide smoother, I guess. And it definitely held up, I'll give you that. You know, I tracked it for like four years, something like that there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it really. Love that car. I think that's the only car I regret selling is um my m3 all the other cars i've had in the past eh. i even had a miata don't really care for it i mean miatas are cool like i i raced and spec miata for competition school or comp class not necessarily school i guess but just for competition school or class and it was fun no doubt and there's a lot of people competing in spec miata which makes wheel to wheel fun too but I don't know, just having an 8.6 is just kind of more unique. You don't really see a lot of 8.6s at the racetrack, honestly. You see them more on the drift scene than anything else, which is cool too, you know. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, but you don't see many gripping uh, wise, you know. So that's the thing. But yeah, um... Definitely motorsports sports is my passion. Um, if I can get paid to race, oof, that's my dream job. Um, but I don't think it's ever going to happen just because you, you know, you start so young in motorsports that, you know, when you're trying to do it when you're older, it's hard to go pro. Granted, there are people that do go pro even, you know, um, later on in life, even with NASA, like there's some people in NASA that do end up going pro, but um, it's very, very hard. You gotta have like the means and money and, you know, I'm just a nurse. I'm not a millionaire or anything like that. You know, I'm a middle-class person that just loves to race. And honestly, you know, I definitely probably would save a lot more money if I wasn't into racing. But, you know, I feel like you always got to have a hobby. And because a hobby kind of resets your life, really. Like, you know, you learn to appreciate your work more. You tend to be nice to other people. You know, you're not driving like a madman, totally stressed out. It's a good de-stressor, in my opinion. You know, than, uh, than anything else. So, yeah, that's just one of those things that I've learned um, you know, 
do your hobby that you love to do and you know if you really love it then you know make moves to where you can enjoy it more often you know it's unfortunate like some people aren't able to enjoy their passion because of certain circumstances or other things and I get that but it's also like you know if you really want to do it you got to make other sacrifices in order for you to do the things that you really like and the most important that's what I, I know um, that's what I've come to learn with life you know I'm not only I really only have two hobbies which is camping and racing and camping is a lot cheaper than racing except for the gas part but I camp in places where it's totally free it's dispersed camping and I get to do it with my wife too because she loves to camp um, she's she definitely loves getting outdoors and, and camping and it's something we both enjoy even with our dogs too so like um, I take that very special and everything and then my racing is my other hobby that I always loved ever since I was a little kid and I always try to find a way or means to keep on doing it and some of the sacrifices I do is I work a lot of hours, you know, like I do overtime all the time. I work four days a week versus three days a week. Sometimes I'll even um, do other side gigs and stuff like that just to make a little extra money, you know. Trying to become an instructor too for NASA if I can because, you know, instructors get to race for free. The only problem is, is you're instructing, right? and then you have the race and then you instruct you don't really have time in between to like work on your car which um you kind of need to do if you have car issues so you can make it to your next race but if you're instructing and you're having car issues you might not be able to make it to your next race because of that so that's the only thing the downside with instructing but hey you get free uh, track time so can't complain with that so once I get, I guess, hopefully my 8.6 really dialed in to where it won't blow up on me or nothing like that, then, yeah, I might probably do that too. I've instructed for Driven and Blessed, but they haven't been doing any uh, track days since COVID hit, unfortunately. But yeah, I would get free track sessions from them, and then that's it, really. So yeah. But yeah, I mean, just definitely find your hobby and passion and, you know, try to... I guess make it work with your life, you know? But anyways, that's it for me with the rambling. Uh, so I'm going to make sure that um, you clean off the bearing again here. I'm going to use a uh, brake cleaner again and clean off the plastic gauge that was on here. And then, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep, it's off. Totally off there here. Okay, it's off there. Okay, so face it towards like this here. Oh, and let's put engine lube now since um, we um, basically um, removed the plastic gauge. You want to make sure you put engine lube here on here. So we just do like this here. Honestly, you can put a, a, dab, a dab there doesn't really matter because honestly it's going to get coated anyways so I cleaned it off and then now I'm going to put it on here now which is facing the correct way here okay so that's that clean this guy off here next with the uh, plastic gauge here make sure it's all cleaned out here okay all right alcohol I mean a uh, good old cleaner here works here Oof, this is a little bit more stubborn okay okay so that's pretty good there here all right so that's that all right and put a lube on here also lube on the on the main bearing here too here Okay, and then there you go on the main bearing there. Okay, and then make sure the orientation is right here. So, yep. Alright, so that's that there. Okay, and the lube on the 
main bearing here to here okay and I'm gonna put some lube also on these guys here too here just because this is also part of the rotating mass so I'm just gonna put a little bit of lube on here too here oh wait wait, wait, wait. No, I also forgot gotta clean this out here again gotta make sure you clean this out here very well can't be rushing things Okay, so that's nice and clean there. Okay, there we go. All right, so again, let's uh, put this back on here like so. This one like so again. Let's put some lube on here, two here. Okay, and lube on this side here, two here. Oops. Again, the uh, deal here. So let's put some lube on this side here too. Okay, we're good here. Okay, let's just make sure. Right, so it goes in like this, like so here. And it's all good there here too. Okay, there you go. That's good there. Alrighty. And then let's uh, clean off this guy here again too. You always gotta make sure you clean off the uh, the little, um, I guess, plastic gauge. It's just a piece of wax really than anything else. Okay, I guess we're good there here. That's good, all right. So now I'm gonna put some lube on here again. You can never have too much lube, as I always say. There you go. You wanna make sure this rotates nicely and freely. Okay, so this is four. You always wanna orient them properly too here, which arrows go this way to the front. And you wanna number them one, two, three, four, five, so yeah. Um, yeah, and it's almost five, so almost time for dinner. And I think we're almost done here too about assembling the crank here and checking bearing clearances here. So, yeah, that's a good thing. Okay, all right. Okay, so we're good here. Sweet. All right, so now I'm going to use the lube again here. That's all nice and clean. Okay. All right. Good old assembly lube here. All right. And let's just see. I think this thing goes in like so here. There we go. Okay. There we go. So that part's done. Now I just put the caps on here. And we're gonna put the caps on here. Bam. All nice and pretty. All very nice and pretty here. And then, yep, that's that there. And then I'm just gonna put some lube on, probably on the threads here too, just to make it real nice and pretty here too here. It's gonna just do that here. Okay. Okay, here we go. I'm just doing this just to be a little bit extra, I guess. I don't think you really have to, but it's whatever's, you know. Oh, this one looks like it's not really aligned all the way here. Ooh, good thing I checked. This is this one's not aligned all the way here, pretty much all the way here perfectly. Let me adjust this here to where it will be aligned. Okay, here, okay, so that one, Oof, a good thing I checked. So this one, you wanna make sure the alignment's all correct here, so let me just see this here, just like that there here. Oh, nope, okay, so let me just pull this guy out of here real quickly here. I'm just gonna align it perfectly. Okay, so that's perfect, like so here. Okay, okay. Okay. Mm 
Mm, it doesn't want to really go in all the way here. There we go. Okay. There we go. All right. Sweet. So I just made sure it's aligned right here. So that is correct there here. Okay. Make sure it's aligned right. It's all facing right there. Okay. Cool. All right. So yeah. All right. So that's that there here. There we go. All right. Alrighty here. Let's go ahead and uh, just thread these guys in here now. Okay. Alrighty here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put on the flat side here, too, here. Just because. There you go. Alright. And technically, this loop will just get filtered out in the initial startup anyways if there's too much. This is going to help set in the, the deal there too. So, yep. Oh, dark again. <sighs> okay, there you go. Just doing this here now. All right. All righty, there you go. This is good lubricant, though. look at that. It's kind of tacky, like, um, I guess engine lube. Or the um, engine assembly lube. It's kind of tacky like that. It feels tacky on my gloves, so. Mm hmm And again, it says 60-pound uh, foot, so when you do it, you got to... Um, Do it in sequence again. Alrighty, there you go here. And I think I might call it a day after I torque this all down to spec. Because that's how you install the um, crank. I guess next time I'm going to show you how to install the pistons here. Which uh, isn't too terribly hard to, I hope. Hopefully you don't run into issues here. Okay, so that's that there here. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna clean up my hand here a tiny bit here from all this grease and shit. Alright, and again, you just, um, not gonna use the gun anymore. Just let's put this away before I do some damage here. Okay, so basically, inside to outside again. So, yep. Yeah. Set to outside here. So it looks tight. Alrighty, inside to outside here. Alright, that's good there. That's good there here too. And it's going to show you how to measure thrust clearance, but I'll do that in the next video. I'm just going to just install this and then call it a day. Alright. Doing this here. Okay, and then I'm going to repeat the sequence again to where um, it's going to be 20, 40, 60 foot pounds. I got to do multiple passes. You don't want to do it 60 pounds immediately, or so I'm told. You just want to make it nice and uniform. And again, we're going to be doing it with this guy here. So, yep. And then it's going to be, let's see here, 20 foot pounds here. Okay. In the case of 20 foot pounds. And then uh, basically, I want to just do it to where I feel resistance. And then I'm going to just torque it to 20 foot pounds here. So, okay. I felt resistance there. 
I want to just do it like here too, here just to make it all uniform first. And then, okay, put resistance there here a bit, okay. Okay, and it's at 20 foot pounds, yep. And then one sweeping motion here. There you go, here, here, the click here. One sweeping motion here. There you go, okay. Now to the next side here, kind of star pattern here. Do it to put some resistance here. And then, there we go, some resistance. Then we'll do it right here too here next. Okay. Okay, some resistance, all right. And so do it till 20 foot pounds. There you go, hear the click. All right. All right, so 20 foot pounds. Okay. And then uh, just like this, like so here. All right, some resistance there. And then I'm gonna do it right here. So when you feel it kind of get a little bit harder, that's when you know you should basically stop. You wanna you wanna use a sense of touch really, or feel. So that's a click for 20. All right, that's 20 right there. Okay. Next up is this guy here again. All right, there you go. Some resistance. Do this thing here again here. So I'm just uh, still going nicely here. Okay. okay. So I want a nice sweeping motion here. So that's 20. And a nice sweeping motion here. All right, that's 20. All right, and then do like this here to feel some resistance here. Okay, some resistance. And then here we go here. Do it to feel some resistance here. There we go. Okay. There we go. And again. All right. So now 40 foot pounds. Let's just see here. All right. So 40. There you go. Let me go ahead and reset the motion sensor again. There you go. All right, so 40 foot-pounds here. Okay. One sweeping motion here again here too. There you go here, so you guys can see. There you go. Okay. All right. And then back here. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 And then okay. Okay. So that's at forty. Now I do sixty foot pounds here. Alright, so 60 foot pounds here. Alright, so now I'm going to do it again here. Alright, so it's at 60 foot pounds. Yep, 60. Alright, so I'm going to do this like so here again. Okay, so that's 60. Start in the middle. Okay. 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 Let's go with this here. Okay. 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 And then 60. Sweet. And you want to do it like again, nice sweeping motion swoop, you know, not then uh, stopping it. All right. So let me just uh, clean up a bit here. And after you, I always like to clean my machines or tools here a little bit just so it doesn't get all 
Nasty. I'm gonna reset this back to 10 foot pounds again here. Okay, let's just reset this back to 10 foot pounds. Okay. Alrighty, so that's 10 foot pounds. Okay, here. Alrighty, so. Um, that's it there, really. Um, almost done for today. That's just installing the crank and checking bearing clearance. Um, I will clean up here, but next thing you want to do is just make sure that it spins freely. So, what do you do? You just do like this. Oh yeah, it spins nice and good here. Nice and good. Oh yeah. Okay, so that's that for now. Um, I guess part two will be uh, installing these pistons and um, shouldn't be too hard. This one already has the ARP bolts in them. So yeah, um, that's it for now. Uh, thank you. I guess that's it. So yeah. All right, bye.